Hallelujah. We may all stand and lift up our hands as we pray. Father, we thank you for this time that you have given us. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your love. We thank you for giving us this time to gather as saints, O oh Lord, to listen to your word. As we cross over to this time of your word, we ask that may your Holy Spirit open our hearts, touch our hearts, cause us, our hearts to be sensitive to your word, to be receptive to your word. And may this word transform our lives. May this word take us to the next level in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, ancient of days. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Praise and worship. We may take our seats. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, church. I, I greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You may turn to your neighbor and greet them on my behalf. Hallelujah. And welcome them in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, I'm not going to be long because time is already far spent. I'll be sharing a, a sermon or a, a short teaching which is entitled Times and Seasons. Hallelujah. Times and Seasons. Turn to your neighbor and say Times and Seasons. Genesis chapter 8 verse 22. The Bible says, as long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest time, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never cease. As long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest time, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never cease. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say times and seasons. Say times and seasons. So this sermon is meant to teach us to be aware that in this life that we are living in, we all go through different seasons and times in our lives. As Christian believers, we go through different seasons and times. And these seasons and times, they are determined by God. God is the one who determines times and seasons. According to the book of Daniel chapter 2, we will read Daniel chapter number 2 from verse 21. Daniel chapter number 2, verse 21. Daniel chapter 2, verse 21. The Bible says in verse 21. It says, I will start from verse 20. And he said, Praise be to the name of God forever and ever. Wisdom and power are his. He changes times and seasons and seasons. He disposes kings and raises up others. Hallelujah. Part A he says. He changes times and seasons. Say God changes times and seasons. Say God changes times and seasons. Different seasons have different purposes. And so we need to apply different principles in our lives. Hallelujah. Different seasons have different principles that we need to apply. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God is the one who changes them. You cannot determine which season or time you are in in your life. So today we want to learn about maybe two or, or three seasons which happen in, in the life of Christians, which come in our lives or in the lives of human beings in general. And what principles we ought to apply because different seasons uh, require us to apply different principles. You cannot apply the same principle in every season that you find yourself in. Hallelujah. That is why these seasons 
are in the hands of God. It is only God who changes a season in your life. And when he changes a season in your life, there are certain principles that he expects us to apply. Hallelujah. You cannot always have a season maybe of, of joy in your life and then you never experience mourning. It's impossible. Hallelujah. They are, according to Ecclesiastes, let us go to Ecclesiastes, to the book of Ecclesiastes, or the book of Umchumayeli in, in, in Greek, hallelujah, in Devere, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. I wanted to make my sermon sound with the having a bit of Greek, but it's in Devere, we call it Umchumayeli, the preach. Say the preach. Hallelujah. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter number 3, from verses 1 to 8, there is something that God reveals to us about times and seasons. The preacher says, there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. Then it, it starts to mention different times that happen in, in our lives or in the life of a human being. But part, verse 1 says there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. So it means there are certain activities that if you do at the wrong timing, they won't succeed. Hallelujah. So you must know before you do a certain activity, you, you find out whether is it its time. Like maybe when you are planting, you cannot wake up tomorrow and you start to plant maize. Because it's not the season for doing that. Hallelujah. I'm not teaching you farming, but I'm trying to show you. I'm, we are going somewhere. Turn to your and say we are going somewhere. Verse 2 says, A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. So you cannot always be dancing. Sometimes mourning can come, but you, and you cannot always be mourning. Joy has to come in your life. Hallelujah. There is a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. Hallelujah. A time to be silent and a time to speak. Verse 8, a time to love and a time to hate. A, a time for war and a time for peace. Hallelujah. So I wanted us to just read so that we know that there is a time for everything in your life. We are not meant to operate in, in one season for the rest of your life or for the rest of our lives. Seasons change in your life. Hallelujah. There is a, a season for every activity on earth, or there is a time for every activity on earth. So I want us to look at two important seasons that occur in the life of Christians, or that occur in our lives. The first season is the obvious one, the season which I read in Genesis chapter 8, verse 22, when God says, as surely as heavens and earth endure seed time, and the harvest time will not pass away. Hallelujah. So the first one is seed time. Seed time or a planting season. We are all given a time and opportunity by the Almighty God to, to plant. Oh, there is a, a season in our lives that God gives us, which is called the season of planting or the season or the seed time season. Hallelujah. This is a, a season where that represents work, a time to work. You can plan to work or you can plant love 
or you can plant whatever situation. It's a time of building. Hallelujah. It's a, it also represents as a time of building. It also represents a time of new beginnings. When you are beginning something new. So we know that God has given every one of us something to sow. Let us go to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10. The Bible says in verse 10, Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will en enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. Now he will supply seed. So God is the one who supplies seed to the sower. God gives us seeds. Each and every one of us has seeds to sow. In this life, you have something to contribute in this life. Hallelujah. And when, when you, you have not reached the time of harvest, you are in the time of what? Of planting. You are in the seed time. Hallelujah. You are in the time of planting. Say, I mean the time of planting. So how we behave in this season determines what we will enjoy in the harvest time. What we will enjoy in the harvest time. If there is anything that you want to harvest in your life, maybe you want a financial breakthrough, or you want to harvest a marriage, or you want to, whatever you want to harvest, God will always give you an opportunity to sow for that harvest. Hallelujah. I'm not talking about, I know, some messages when they so, say so, people usually think of money that maybe wants to collect an offering. No, I'm not talking about like sowing money. In, in, it may apply here, but this is not what I mean. What I mean is that God gives you an opportunity to work towards that thing, the fulfillment of the harvest that you want. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this seed time is a very important time that God gives us. Hallelujah. So, we want to look at just principles that we need to apply during the season of planting or during seed time. The first principle that you apply is the, is the principle of preparation, which the servant of God has been teaching us about, I think, for the past two weeks. You can go on YouTube and, and, and listen to those messages. Before a farmer goes out to to plant, the first thing that they do is they prepare the land. They go and toil the land so that the land is able to receive seed. Hallelujah. They go and weed the place. So it's a, a, a principle that we apply during seed time. We what? We, we, we prepare. Say we prepare. Say we prepare. Hallelujah. So it's a very important principle that we, we, we apply during seed time. And then the second principle is the principle of faith. Say faith. Say faith. When farmers uh, go to farm, they operate with by faith because they are not guaranteed of any harvest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us go to Ecclesiastes chapter number 11 and we, and we see the behavior of farmers. Today we are reading the book of the preach. Ecclesiastes chapter number 11 from verse 4. The Bible says, Whoever watches the wind will not plant. Whoever looks at the clouds will not reap. So whoever watches the wind will not plant. So farmers, they do not look at the wind or the weather. They know the season for farming has come. Whether the rains will come or not, I will put my seed on the ground. That is faith. Because faith is trusting in God. They trust God to bring the rain. They know that the rain is not in their hands. They go out and do it and, and, and plant the seed. So seed time is a time of 
of operating by faith. Hallelujah. Also in our lives as Christians, for whatever you want God to do, maybe you want a marriage, you have to operate by faith. Or you want a business. If you want a financial breakthrough, it means you have to go by faith. You don't have to look at the, maybe at the economic situations. Or you look at, at the markets or how people are surviving. Then you, you don't start a business. But by faith, if you go and you write a business plan and you start to launch a business, that's moving by faith. That is how you can have a financial breakthrough. Hallelujah. Because here the Bible says, he who looks at the wind will not plant. Because sometimes, even especially in this country of ours, if you look at the economic situations, you will not do anything. You will end up not starting anything. Hallelujah. So you must not look at the outside, at the outside world. But you must look inside. You must have faith in God. Just like the farmers during the seed time. If the servant of God comes and releases marriages here, it means you must operate by faith. You must start to behave like someone who wants to get married or who wants to marry. It's also planting a seed. It will be faith. You will be planting faith towards God. Hallelujah. You will be planting, God will be checking for faith. You, you have to first of all prepare and God will come and check faith. You don't have to look at the economic situations and say, how will I marry? Where will I get the money when things are hard like this? When you look at your, your wallet or your bank account, the, the word of God will not be fulfilled. Because it will bring doubt in your heart and God does not work where there is doubt. Hallelujah. So you have to trust God. You have to have faith in God. Say, I will have faith in God. Say, I will have faith in God. So just like the farmers, we must have faith during times of planting, during the, the, the time of, of, of planting. Hallelujah. And also the time of planting is a time of hard work. It represents a time of putting in the work. As Christians, there are seasons that God brings in our lives where we must put in the work, where God expects us to work so that we receive a reward, so that we receive a harvest. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book, let us go to the book of Proverbs, chapter 20, verse 4. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 4. Say, I will put in the work. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 4. The Bible says, Sluggards do not plow in season, so at harvest time they look but find nothing. Sluggards. These are, uh, are people who are, who are lazy. Hallelujah. So it says, Lazy people, they do not plow, they do not put in the work. So laziness will cause us not to receive a harvest because during the season of, of planting, we will, we will be doing nothing. Lazy people will be doing nothing. Hallelujah. They do not raise their hands to work. And when you work, you will be squandering a, an opportunity to plant. And thereby you will not receive anything. Hallelujah. There are seasons, even as Christians, in your spiritual life, where God, if it's a season of planting, God, like, he, he gives you a pattern for prayer, a pattern to plant prayer. There are seasons like that in, the, in our lives as Christians, where there is a revival in your life and you must plant prayer like never before, because that season will not last. It may end sometime. And when the, because that prayer will be, that, that revival or prayer life, will be coming in your life so that you, to prepare you for the challenges that will come, will come later in the future. And when those challenges, they come, it will be too late for you to start to build a prayer life. 
the season for building the prayer life will have ended. It will be a time for you now to act with whatever strength that you will have gathered during times of preparation, during times, uh, during the season of, of planting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when God gives you a season of planting, you must work. Hallelujah. He may give you uh, this season so that you wake up maybe in the morning to pray. You feel a burden to pray 3 a.m. You are feeling a burden to pray. You must not despise those seasons. You must wake up and pray because the season might not last. A time will come in your life when you maybe you need those time, that time to pray and you can't find time. Maybe you are now too busy and you will need to rely on those prayers that you are making. Hallelujah. Say, Almighty God, I thank you for, for giving me this opportunity to plant, for giving me this opportunity to work hard. Let us go to the book of Proverbs, chapter 14, verse 23. Proverbs, chapter 14, verse 23. The Bible says, All hard work brings a profit, but mere talk only leads to poverty. All hard work brings a profit, but mere talk leads to poverty. Hallelujah. So hard work leads to profit. It leads to a, a, a bountiful harvest. So during times of planting, we need to, to be hard working. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Hard work. If you find yourself working very hard, you know that you are in the time of planting. Verse 58, the Bible says, Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Your labor in the Lord is not in vain. So if you are working for the Lord, uh, which I assume all of us are doing, when you work for the Lord, your labor is not in vain. The Almighty God expects us to work for Him so that He can grant us rewards. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Like right now, we are all working for our salvation. We are working our salvation with fear and trembling. And on the last day when the Lord Jesus Christ comes back, you will want an account of what works we did on, on earth. And then you will give us rewards depending on how we worked, on how you worked. He will be giving you a reward if you, if you worked diligently. He will give you a reward and say, well done, my my faithful servant. Hallelujah. According to Matthew 25, verse 23, you will get rewards from the Almighty God because you have worked hard. Working hard does not only apply for your own personal needs, but it also applies working hard for the Almighty God. Because when we say we are working hard, a person becomes serious. Maybe when they are working for, for their for their boss who is not even saved. But when they are working for God, they are not working hard. They, are, they do things haphazard, Lord. They do things half-hearted. Hallelujah. And that's a wrong seed that God doesn't want us to plant. Because when God is appraising us at the end of time, during the last days, you will have a high standard and you will be asking us, what did you do for me? Did you work hard for me or you were doing things lazy? You were lazy in working for me. How many souls did you win for me? Hallelujah. What did you contribute to my kingdom? Were you an asset or you were a liability? Hallelujah. Say, ask your neighbor and say, are you an asset or a liability? Hallelujah. So you must all be assets in the kingdom of God. And then 
Let us go to Psalm 126, verse 6. The Bible says, Those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with joy, with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping and carrying seed to sow. Those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow. Psalm 126, verse 6. So, hard work's work also represents pain. Pain. These people were carrying seed and they were weeping and God was promising that they will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them, carrying a harvest with them. Hallelujah. So when you are, in pay, when you are working hard, it doesn't mean always that you will be enjoying. Sometimes there is pain when you are planting anything. Even let's say, for example, you are starting a business. It doesn't mean that it will be easy. There might be pain. You might feel pain because Maybe sometimes you might need to skip meals to try and save money. You skip meals to try and save money. Or you are saving to try and build a house. It's pain, but you are planting. It's a season of planting. Hallelujah. It doesn't mean that you are cursed or that you need prayer. It means that you are in the season of, of planting. Hallelujah. And there is no one who can speed up that speed up that season for you. We can try and make the season go faster for you and, and so that you get a harvest. Hallelujah. We have to let the process, the natural processes take place. Like a farmer who plants a seed in the ground. They can go for three months without harvesting anything. Waiting for the rains to do their work. And then you will be plowing the land and removing weeds waiting so that he can but as Christians these days we don't want to give in the time to, to wait for God, we don't want to be patient in the planting season or in the seed time season we always want the harvest hallelujah ask your neighbor and say do you want the harvest without planting it's not possible Hallelujah. It's not possible to have a harvest without planting anything. Of course, there are people who, who get a harvest without planting. In the Bible, they were called the raiders or robbers. When the Israelites planted something, they, during the times when it was about to be harvest, there will be other nations will come in and, and raid. Hallelujah. And raid their crops and take their crops especially when they were fighting with God. God will allow the enemies to do that. But that's a demonic thing. If you start to harvest where you have not planted, you know that you are operating like demons. Hallelujah. 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 So as Christians, it's very important for you to plant for everything in your life. It's like maybe when you are in a marriage, you have to plant your time in that relationship so that it becomes a marriage. Maybe you are in a relationship, you want it to be a, a marriage. You have to plant your time, your love, and build it with time. Maybe it lasts four months or six months. Investing your emotions, your air time, calling that person until it graduates to become a marriage. Hallelujah. And then it graduates and it becomes a marriage. You have invested, you are now reaping. Hallelujah. Imagine if someone was to invest their time the, and the, invest a lot of time, their emotions. Then at the last minute, that person abandons that person and looks for another one and they are married. On the same day, they find someone, then they leave that one. Hallelujah. And that one says, Ah, it will be evil, it will be diabolic. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because people don't want to put in the time or the effort or hard work. That's why they love shortcuts. They want someone who will propose to them today, tomorrow, in, they have the money, they are ready to marry them. Hallelujah. It doesn't work like that. You have to put in the time, you have to put in hard work. Say hard work. You have to put in hard work. Say hard work. I think yesterday the, the servant of God was preaching about 
hard work during their family devotion. So you, you may check that clip on, on hard work and diligence. Hallelujah. It's a very important aspect during seasons of planting. And then the other important principle during seed time is the principle of patience. I think I've already alluded to that principle as I was sharing here. We we'll read from James chapter 5, verse 7. Where it's teaching us about where it's teaching us about, about patience. It says, be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. Or be patient because the Lord's coming is at hand. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop. Patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. You too be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. You too be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. So it gives us an example of farmers. Our farmers, they wait for the autumn and spring rains before they, before they harvest. Hallelujah. So as Christians, we also must be patient during times of planting because as I said before times of planting may also be times of pain you may be experiencing pain in your life but it's a time of planting maybe God is working on your character your business maybe is, is growing at a slow pace it's a necessary process because it has to grow with you it has to grow with your character you have to exercise patience you don't try to speed the process by prayer and say, no, this business must grow miraculously. I must wake up a millionaire in one day. And you don't even understand the business. You wake up as a millionaire one day and your character is failing to carry those millions. You end up backsliding. God will not allow that. Hallelujah. He will allow the process to take place in your life. You will allow the business to grow at the right pace. At the pace which you are growing, you are growing with the business. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let us go to Galatians chapter 6 verse 9. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9. In the book of Galatians chapter 6 verse 9. Say thank you Jesus. Say thank you, Jesus, for seed time. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. The Bible says, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. We will reap a harvest if we do not give up. So let us not be weary in doing good. At the proper time we will reap will reap a harvest if we do not give up. So patience will cause you not to give up. What causes most people to give up is that they are not patient. If you are patient, you will not give up. Hallelujah. You must be patient. Patience is a very important principle to apply during times of planting. Whatever you are planting in your life, you must not give up. You must not be weary in doing good. Whatever you are doing, you must not be weary. Hallelujah. Go to harvest is promised to only those who do not give up. Say harvest is promised to those who don't give up. Turn to your neighbor and say, do not give up. Hallelujah. So we see even from this verse that doing good is a seed. Doing good is a seed. Because it says we must not become weary in doing good. So whatever good that you do, keep on doing it. The harvest will definitely come. It may not be now, but it will definitely come. Because most people who do good, they, they usually want to give up doing good. Because after doing good, maybe they are persecuted, or people gossip them, or people fight them, and they want to give up. When you do good, you must never give up. Hallelujah. The harvest will come 
and the one who gives the harvest is God. Hallelujah. Say thank you, God, for determining my time of harvest. Hallelujah. So after the seed time, we go to the harvest time, the one that everyone wants, the time of harvesting. Hallelujah. How many people want a harvest? Hallelujah. We have to apply those principles if you want a harvest in our lives. Hallelujah. We must apply those principles and the harvest God Almighty will give us. The harvest. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9. The Bible says, Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of your crops. So the harvest time is a time where we reap our crops or we, we get that breakthrough that we want. Hallelujah. Or we get uh, that job that you, you needed. Or whatever you are planting or whatever you are believing God for. It is that time. And in that time also there are principles that God expects us to apply during that time. During that time of breakthrough. The first principle is that you must honor the Lord. According to Proverbs 3 verse 9. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your crops. Like the Israelites, they were required to give a first fruit of their crops. It was a way of showing honor to the Lord. It was a way of testifying. So when we receive a harvest in our lives, we must not forget the Lord. Hallelujah. It's very easy to say, I will not forget the Lord. When you, we are in that time which we are talking about, the time of pain the time of toiling, the time of hard work. It's very easy to promise God that I will not forget you when you grant me that million dollar deal or when you grant me that breakthrough. It's very easy to promise God, to, to, to tell God that you will, you will honor him. But when that breakthrough comes, it's very easy again to forget God and, and to start to remember the pain that you were in and say, I worked for this thing. I cried for this thing. And you start to give honor to yourself and not giving honor to God. Hallelujah. So it is a, a very important principle to apply, to know that we must honor the Lord with our wealth and with the first fruits of all our crops. Say, I will honor you, Almighty King. So the time of harvest is a time of honoring the Lord. Hallelujah. Say, I will honor you, Almighty King. I will honor you, Mighty King. Hallelujah. Let us go to the book of Matthew chapter 25, verse 23. Matthew 25, verse 23. The time of harvest is a time of walking closer to God. Because we see from the Bible that whenever the Israelites whenever the Israelites moved during times of peace when they were dwelling in peace and in prosperity, they left God. When you read from the, book, the books of First Kings and Second Kings wherever God granted them peace with their enemies, no one was raiding their fields and they had prospered. They went after other gods. They left God. So we must never underestimate the times of plenty or the times of, of harvest because it's very easy to, to leave God during those times. So when the harvest comes in your life, it's a time for you to strengthen your relationship with God, to, to, press, to press on God more and more because it's very easy for you to lose God. It's very easy for us to leave God and follow our own pleasures, our own desires. Hallelujah. So the time of harvest is a time of seeking God Almighty. Say, I will seek you, Almighty God, all the days of my life. Hallelujah. Another principle that we apply during times of harvest is the principle of generosity. Say generosity. 
Proverbs chapter 11, verses 24 to 25. We'll read Matthew 25 later. Let us go to Proverbs 11, verse 24 to 25. Proverbs chapter 11. Proverbs chapter 11. Verses 24 to 25. The Bible says, One person gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly, but but comes to poverty. Verse 25. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. Proverbs chapter 21 verse 13. Proverbs chapter 21 verse 13. Whoever shuts their ears to the cry of the poor will also cry out and not be answered. So during times of of harvest, when you get your breakthrough, it is very important for you to be generous. God will be watching you how you will behave towards the poor, how you will behave towards the weak. Hallelujah. When God gives you the power. So during times when God breaks through for you, it is very important for you to exercise generosity. Of course, we must exercise generosity all the days of our lives in every season. But in the seasons of breakthrough, it is very important because it will keep you humble. It will keep you in good standing with the Almighty God. Hallelujah. Say, I will be generous. I will be generous. Hallelujah. Because you will be knowing that you are a steward. Hallelujah. Say, I am a steward. You will be practicing stewardship by your generosity. During times of plenty, it is when our character is is tested to see how how we practice stewardship. When God breaks through for you, you must know that God is looking at you to check if you are a good steward. You start to behave as if you know that you are a steward, that this breakthrough, this wealth that God has given me, it is not mine. I am a steward of it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say thank you, Jesus, for this breakthrough. Hallelujah. It means God wants to give us breakthroughs. Hallelujah. If not, if, 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 if not he has already given you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He wants to give you a lot of wealth, to give us a lot of wealth. But he, he expects us to be stewards. Hallelujah. Say thank you, Jesus for the wealth that you are giving me. Say thank you, Jesus, for the wealth that you have given me. Hallelujah. Say thank you, Jesus, for the wealth that you have given me. We may stand in the presence of God. Say thank you, Jesus. So we just looked at two seasons in our lives. The seasons of planting and the seasons and the season of harvesting the following are the ways to give i shared a few principles that we need to apply during seed time this principle of preparation the principle of faith the principle of hard work and the principle of patience and then during harvest time the principle of generosity the principle of stewardship the principle of also preparation for the sowing season. Hallelujah. So we must apply these principles and we must always uh, be able to discern what season you are in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the Bible, uh, my last verse would be First Chronicles. There is a group of people that the Almighty God favored with the, discern- the discerning of seasons. The Bible says the sons of Issachar, they could tell the times or the seasons that they were in. Hallelujah. There are people that God has gifted who are able to tell the times and seasons that we are. 
like when the servant of God comes and stands and says, it's a time of prayer. He will be telling you a season that it's a time of prayer and fasting or it's a time when God is releasing marriages or it's a time when God is releasing a lot of wealth. You will be declaring a season and in that season, you are expected to apply these principles. Hallelujah. God will not just say, I have released the marriages in this place. And then you are not applying these principles. You expect the, the husband to just appear in your bedroom without applying these principles. It will not work. Hallelujah. God will be expecting you and I to do something by these principles. The season will already be there. The husbands will already be moving or the wives will already be around. Hallelujah. You will have to act to fulfill the word of what God would have declared. Hallelujah. So, in First Chronicles 12, verse 32, this group of people were given discernment. Hallelujah. You may ask for discernment, but I don't believe everyone is given the, the, the grace to discern the season that we are. That is why we are a body. Some people, they are given that grace. And when they declare, you don't need to ask that I need also God to tell me what season I'm in. If it is declared, you have to act on what others have declared. We don't have to act like Ahab, you see. Because Elijah said, it is now the time for the rains. Ahab was still darling and saying, is it rains when the clouds are, when there are no clouds? Hallelujah. Ahab had to just rely on the, what the prophet had said. So if a season has been declared in your life, just act according. Hallelujah. Act, act accordingly and you will, receive, you will receive a harvest. Because that is the season that we all want. We want the season of harvest. Hallelujah. And God guarantees us that God is faithful. He will give us that harvest. Hallelujah. So we may lift up our hands as we pray the present worship as they come to the stage. Let us lift our hands. Just ask God to cause you to help you to descend the season you are in and to know what principle you ought to apply and to know what principle you ought to apply in your life because God wants to give you a harvest God wants to give us a harvest hallelujah thank you Jesus Holy Father we bless you Holy Spirit we thank you for your word in the mighty name of Jesus we thank you for empowering us by your word, for giving us strength to live, Father, in whatever season that you have determined in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for every season, Father, because you are the one who determines the seasons that we live in, the harvest time, the seed time. Father, we appreciate you. We appreciate you, ancient of days. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, that even as we are in the harvest time, that the enemy shall by no means steal that which you have determined us to harvest. Father, we thank you that for those that are in the seed time, that, Father, we are empowering them to apply the necessary principles, to apply the necessary principles for us, O oh God, to reap a harvest, to reap a harvest. To those, Father, that have been weary, O oh God, in doing good, weary because of, of the of the pains of life. Father, we thank you that you are granting us the strength in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Ancient of days, we thank you. Holy Father, we bless you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We thank God. Hallelujah. We may clap our hands for God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, we are, this time we are going to, uh, to ask the uh, elder to collect the offering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just let us all wave our hands.